This tiny camera may look like a toy, but you'll be surprised what it can do. Alright guys, so all of the shots that you just saw were captured on this tiny camera. It's really hard to believe it. First of all, I wanted to say that this video is sponsored by Insta360. And yeah, I'm really glad to make a full video about this thing where I'm going to put it to the test. And yeah, as you can see, this is not the usual um, place where I shoot my videos because right now I am in Mallorca in Spain um, as some of you know my dad is living here I just flew here yesterday and already said hello to all of the animals Hi! Hi! Alter! As you know, we have a lot of different animals here, a couple of dogs, cats, donkeys, chicken, even some birds. And yeah, I'm not here on my own, but I'm here with Matthias. Yo! <laughs> the animals are bandy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Animals are more important. Yeah, some of you might still remember Matthias. He is the pro FPV pilot who lost his GoPro. <laughs> Oh, the bridge is way too small. <laughs> Are we going to see some more FPV action today? Safe. And we've got two or maybe three FPV drones. So Three FPV drones. Yeah. And we're also going to mount the Insta360 Go 2 on the FPV drone. And we're going to see what we can get with it. Um, yeah. So, so I've always been a huge fan of POV perspective. So that basically means that the camera is mounted somewhere at the height of your eyes so that you basically see the same what the character sees himself. And it is such an immersive perspective and it makes all of the footage look very authentic and raw. I always loved to uh, capture POV shots and finally Insta360 came out with the Go 2 which is mainly designed for capturing these POV shots very easily by just mounting it with the magnet it somewhere I can just put it here on my chest and it's going to stick there because I have this necklace this magnetic pendant on me and yeah it's just focused a lot on the ease of use and you can mount this thing easily anywhere you want so in the next couple of days we're just going to go around the island I'm going to show Matthias a couple of nice spots here in Mallorca I'm kind of a local by now <laughs> so yeah we're going to mount this thing on my head on a car on a motocross bike on an FPV drone and we're just going to see what this thing is capable of so let's go We made it to the first spot. This place is called Cala de Moro. And yeah, one of my favorite spots here in Mallorca. I, uh, probably you've already seen it in my drone videos of Mallorca. It's just this huge beach slash cliff area. And up there you have like a huge mountain. And the plan now is to go up there and maybe also test out what it's like to strap the go-to on the FPV drone. But before we do that, I'm quickly gonna introduce you to how everything works with the go-to. Okay, so this is what you get with the Go 2. The first thing you see is the Go 2 itself. It weighs only 26 grams and it is tiny. The back of the camera is magnetic, which lets you mount it in a variety of accessories. It comes with a small case, which you can open up and attach the camera to charge and change the settings. Furthermore, you will find a cap mount, 
a pivot stand which lets you adjust all axes with a ball head, a USB to USB-C cable for data transfer, and last but not least, the magnetic pendant which lets you mount the GoTo on your chest. All right, so this is about the only spot which is not super windy here. We actually have to see if we can fly the drone. Fingers crossed that Matthias will not crash it here. <laughs> um, yeah, so how does this camera work? It basically comes in this small case, which is about the size of an AirPods Pro case. And yeah, you just open it up and in here is the camera itself. You just take it out here. This is the small camera. It has these small contacts on the back and via these contacts it just connects to the case and you can change the settings via the case. You can also connect the camera to your phone via Wi-Fi and then you can also change all of the settings via your phone. It's pretty simple to change everything within the case itself and you have different options when it comes to the modes but I would definitely recommend to always stick to pro video mode because in this mode you have the most flexibility when it comes to post-production. So the first thing is that you can choose the field of view afterwards in the Insta360 Studio on your laptop which allows you to switch between ultra wide action view, linear and a narrow field of view so that's pretty pretty neat and another thing which is super cool is that you can change the aspect ratio afterwards. This thing just captures in a one by one ratio and afterwards you can just choose if it should be 16 by 9, 1 by 1 or 9 by 16. So basically you just capture the footage once and out of one and the same footage you can create different videos for different platforms like for example Instagram where you need vertical videos and then you can also use the same footage to create for example YouTube videos where you need 16 by 9. So this is super useful. You can basically mount it however you want because this thing has built in horizon lock. So that means that I can twist the camera and the horizon will stay leveled all the time. And you also have the option to use a lock color profile which I would definitely use because that also gives you most flexibility when it comes to color grading because all of these shadows and highlights just still retain the information instead of having like a very contrasty image. And last but not least this thing has flow state stabilization. That's what Insta360 calls their stabilization system and to be honest it's pretty good. Like even if you just move a lot this thing will still stay smooth and also I'm just wondering how it will perform on an FPV drone because on an FPV drone it is super shaky and you have to stabilize a lot and with GoPros you have to stabilize it in post with a program called Real Steady. but with these um, you actually already have an FPV stabilization built into Insta360 Studio so yeah I'm just really curious to see what it looks like now we're just going to strap it on the FPV drone of Matthias and we're going to see what this place actually looks like let's go let's see where Matthias is he already went to the top of the mountain That looks good. Got it. Made it to the top. <laughs> Let's check out this place. Holy shit. That is what I call a view. <laughs> this is the uh, mount adapter, which lets you mount the Insta360 Go 2 on also any GoPro accessory. So that's what we need to mount it on the drone right now. Let's get it. All right, close this up. So basically you just stick it in here like this, and then you can just mount it like any GoPro on any accessories that they offer. bird is coming back. <laughs> Dude, don't force it man, don't force it. Just bring it home safe. Yeah. <laughs> Smooth landing as we know it from you. <laughs> I hope this looked awesome guys. Let's stop it. 
All right, guys, so that's it for this location. Now we're going to go to the next location, but also a huge thanks to you, Matthias, for flying the drone. I myself already bought myself the uh, DJI FPV drone, but I am far away from those FPV skills that Matthias has. If you want to see more videos on FPV and if you speak German, you can also head over to Matthias' account and you can definitely check it out. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go to the next location. Let's go. One of my favorite spots also here on Mallorca. I'm just showing the best spots to Matthias, obviously. Um, it's just this amazing rock bridge in the middle of nowhere. So obviously the go-to is just tiny. It's like the smallest camera I ever owned, but I think that this is actually the main advantage. Just because it has the size of an AirPods Pro case, I can always fit it into my pocket and I can take it anywhere with me. These big cameras, I don't always want to carry my Sony a7S III with me everywhere I go. Basically the size of your camera kind of determines what moments you capture and which ones you don't capture. So yeah, I think that it's a really cool thing about the go-to, you can just bring it anywhere. If I'm going to the beach and if I'm having a drink, I don't want to bring my Sony a7S III with me. And yeah, with this one, it just feels normal and it's not really a pain in the ass to bring it with me. And also on top of that, if you point a small camera like the GoTo at another person, you're much more likely to get a raw and authentic emotion from the other person. Because when you point a Sony a7S III with a microphone into the face of a person who was never in front of a camera, it's definitely going to feel weird and the other person is going to be unnatural because they feel like I have to look a certain way, I have to speak a certain way, and they just can't be themselves. If you just carry this on your chest and interact with other people, they're probably even not going to notice or they're going to be just themselves and really authentic and raw. And yeah, I'm definitely going to ask Matthias if he can still fly the FPV drone here because this is just the perfect spot for it. Let's do it. How would you rate this location on a scale from 1 to 10 when it comes to FPV? Mm, 8. 8? 8. 7, 5, 8. That's 7.5. 7.5. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This guy knows some locations, eh? <laughs> okay. How was that? <laughs> All right, guys, so that's it for the first day here. Quite a lot of things already happened. I'm just sweating because I had to run over this bridge all the time. But I hope that some of these shots looked cool. Tomorrow, we're actually also going to try one more thing with the go-to, which is action sports. Um, we're gonna go on the motocross track and we're going to film a couple of jumps of the friends of my dad. And yeah, let's just see whatever that looks like. So uh, we've tested quite a lot of different things, but now I also wanted to check out if this thing can actually handle some action loaded environments. And we're going to strap it on a couple of different motocross bikes. Yeah, let's just put it on the first mount on the motorbike itself. So especially if you want to film action sports, it's very important to capture as many different angles as possible because in the editing you're going to have the freedom to keep it dynamic by showing different perspectives. I chose to mount the go-to on five different positions. First of all, the steering wheel where the camera faces upwards to see the driver. For this I used the handle mount with the mount adapter which we used earlier when we flew the FPV drone. Tighten it up. Uh. 
Then I mounted it on the side of the driver's helmet where I used an adhesive pad with a lot of pressure in order to make it stick. Then I had one more angle on the side of the bike facing the front tire, one on the FPV drone of Matthias and one more to really push the go-to to its limit. Next up, I'm gonna mount it back here to just have all of the dirt coming up when he starts to ride. And yeah, again, I'm just gonna use one of the adhesive plates and now I can actually connect it again to my phone to just see what the camera sees. I think that should look cool. Pressure! Ah! <laughs> There's less than a finger between this mount and the tire himself. So I just hope that it doesn't really fall off. Hopefully it will work. <laughs> Let's give it a try. <laughs> Jumping so high. <laughs> I just hope that it doesn't fall off. Like, it's just an adhesive, but so many shakes that come in there when he like jumps and lands. I mean, you can just look there. <laughs> but it's still on there, it's still on there. <laughs> good. Perfect. Thank you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this little cinematic edit. I think it looked super dope. And yeah, now we're just going to jump back in the studio and I'm going to give you my final thoughts on the go to. Let's go. So we're back. It's still not a studio. I don't know why I keep saying that I have a studio. <laughs> we're just in the back room and we're just editing here. How's it going? Yeah, it's OK. I mean, Premiere Pro. Same as always. <laughs> So, what are the main benefits about this camera? Where is some room for improvement? And who is this camera actually for? So obviously it is super small and you can take it with you anywhere you go. With a magnetic system, it is very easy to mount this camera for everyday uses. For an action camera, the GoTo actually has a pretty wide field of view. It is equivalent to 11.2 millimeters of focal length, while the GoPro, for example, has around 60 millimeters. One of my favorite things has to be the ability to change the aspect ratio afterwards. I think that this is just super useful. And also there's the option to just edit the clips of the GoTo in the Insta360 app on your phone, which allows you to just uh, create a small video that you upload to your Instagram stories of something that you experienced. But also with the small size and the easy usability of this camera come some trade-offs with it. I think that one downside was that this camera doesn't have an SD card slot. So I sometimes had to transfer all of the data onto my laptop because uh, I wasn't sure if Matthias is going to crash the FPV drone. Bruh. So <laughs> I, I wanted to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I think that the charging case is a good idea and it is very handy to just flip the camera in to close it up and it's going to charge. But I would also like to have removable batteries um, so that if I have longer shoots, I can just switch the batteries and I can keep going instead of waiting for it to charge. So who is this camera for? I think that this camera is mainly made for everyday hobbyists who like to capture moments of their life in a very easy way. But it's also useful for video creators who want to support their stories with authentic and raw POV shots. Also, I think that all of the FPV shots that Matthias was able to capture looked really good. Um, all of the shots were smooth and it's really cool that you only have to activate the FPV stabilization within Insta360 Studio instead of running it through another software like Real Steady. I hope that you guys liked the video. I still can't believe that we captured all of these shots in only two days. And also I can't really believe that a small camera like this is able to pull something off like that. So yeah, you can find a link to the Insta360 go to in the description below. You can check that out. And also if you don't want to miss out on any of the upcoming videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. And I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace out.